I am in my event-based programming era. What is event-based programming? Why am I so keen on it? Well, event-based programming is a programming paradigm, right? It's a method of structuring your applications. Let's say I'm building an application and my application has a lot of external triggers, right? So it might be a user pushing a button on a UI. It might be the clock hitting a certain time and date. It might be, uh, you know, it gets a message from another application on the network and it has to handle and respond to that. It could be a temperature sensor in my room reaching a certain threshold. You've got all of these external triggers that go into your application and you want to be able to do something based on that. Well, that's what event-based programming is all about. So it's a method of writing your program such that you can handle all of these events, you would call them, in different orders. So the, the events might not happen at the same time, right? Like the user isn't going to push a button and then the temperature sensor reaches a threshold, right? It could be any order of those events, but your program is still able to handle and do something useful with those. So the word you would use to describe that would be a more asynchronous based design where you can have things happening, not necessarily at the same time, not necessarily at the same order, but you can still do stuff with that. And so that's what event-based programming is all about. And I have been obsessed with this lately for better or for worse. So I'm writing a parser, you know, I get a message or I have to pass some text thing. It's event-based, right? Like depending on what the text I'm passing is, it generates events based on that. I'm writing a multi-threaded application. Its signaling mechanism is event-based. The threads do something. They generate an event. The other thread consumes that event and, uh, you know, does something with that. I'm designing an embedded system. Well, like the temperature sensor, it creates and emits events. And then it also waits on events from other components in the embedded system to do stuff. You know, it's, it's crazy. I'm writing a distributed system. Well, the messaging framework for that is going to be event-based. God, I'm telling you guys, this is the good stuff. Once you get started, I mean, I'm like hooked on this, I would say. I'm hooked on event-based programming. It's like, it's like a drug, you know? <laughs> so yeah, event-based system design. Things need to happen. They can happen out of order, but that's okay. It's redundant, you know? You don't need things to happen in the same order. It, it gives you robustness in that, in that sense. Now, let's give this a real-world example, right? So I'm doing a team project course at uni at the moment. It's actually the follow-up course to the one that I tutored for like three semesters, so I'm kind of chilling. It's an embedded systems team project course, and we've got to design and create an embedded system, right? And as part of this thing, we have to interface with an ESP32 microcontroller that is running the AT command firmware. And that lets you do all sorts of things, like you can connect the ESP32 to Wi-Fi, you can connect it to MQTT, and you send it these things called AT commands. And I thought about passing these for a very long time until I came up with something I was happy with. And what I was happy with turned out to be event-based. So you send the ESP32 an AT command and you could get back any kind of response, right? Like you don't necessarily have to get back the same number of responses. And, you know, it might send back different error codes. It's all very, uh, and it can give you unsolicited messages as well. So for example, if you're on MQTT, receiving from subscriptions and, you know, Wi-Fi connection events and things like that. Those are all unsolicited messages that can happen. So my parser ended up being event-based. And uh, I was happy with that. It's very robust, you know, it can handle different states very well. And, you know, because sometimes things are non-deterministic, like how long does it take to connect to Wi-Fi? And it can handle that all in a very robust manner. So this is really cool. And then building a messaging application protocol. So like if you're building a, you know, networked program and you need to build a messaging protocol for it, you could make that event based. So, you know, you've got different message types and your parser for your protocol that you're writing could emit different events. You know, if you've got an invalid CRC, that's an event. If you've got an invalid protocol level message, that's an event. If you've got a heartbeat uh, message request, that's an event, right? If you've got valid data that your application wants to pass, you emit that as an event. So you write this event processor, which, which will generate these events. And then you have an event handler, which is more bespoke. So you could have a very generic event processor, and that could be across all components of your messaging system. And then you have bespoke uh, you know, event handlers, for each application that does its respective thing based on those events. So it's pretty cool. And then 
this is turning into a real problem for me because everywhere I go, every problem I see in software engineering at the moment, well, okay, not all of them, but like a lot of them, it's starting to worry me. I look at it and I see an event-based solution. It's actually beginning to be kind of a problem. And this is a genuine problem because, you know, you never want to be shoehorning in or like forcing one type of paradigm into every solution. Like event-based programming is great, but it has some real downsides. And I'm starting to find those out now as I go along, right? So state changes in uh, event-based programming are non-deterministic. So, you know, if you're building a finite state machine or something like that, where you are keeping track of the state of your application, but then you get an event which forces it to skip states or just jump all over the place, you know? that's part of the that's part of the fun right it's part of the benefit you know is that you can swap between these states arbitrarily based on events but that's also a downside because keeping track of where your program's at in its execution becomes a lot more tricky um handling multiple events at once can be hard as well so like you know if you've got if you receive a message or two and in that message there's multiple events how are you going to handle that are you just going to ignore one are you going to skip reading on the next loop? Like if you're reading from a socket, are you going to skip reading that socket on the next iteration of your loop so you can handle the other event? You know, like handling multiple events at once can be tricky and you really have to think about your application design in order to do it in a clever way. So onboarding new people gets even harder. I want to go back to this team project example that I was talking about, right? So I'm doing this team project at uni and I'm writing a lot of the firmware for that, naturally. And I'm trying to, like, I was trying to explain to another team member who is recently, you know, coming in and doing some contributions. And they have to write PC software that interfaces with the embedded system component. And my embedded firmware is all event-based. Its messaging protocol is event-based. You know, I do certain things based on the events. So like, for example, I set config parameters. If you want to change the config, you've got to send me some kind of uh, message for that. And the messaging protocol is event-based. And um, yeah, it's like interfacing with that and onboarding somebody new with the state changes and things that they need to hit can be pretty tricky because as the system designer with this event-based thing, you have all of that context in your head. Like you've got all the state changes, you have what all the events do, you know what your event handler does, but if you're bringing somebody new into it, even though you've created something that is, you know, quite robust and it might be appropriate for the circumstance, getting them to load the context into their head can be a bit tricky as well because you've got to explain to them, oh, you know, if it does this, then it does that. If it, you know, gets this, then it changes the state to this. Uh, in, but it can revert back to that previous state if this happens. So onboarding new people who don't necessarily understand the context of your event-based program can be a little bit hard, and but that's okay. Like sometimes there are, and, and this is what I'm saying before, like why this is kind of being an issue that I'm trying to solve every, well, not trying, but like I see event-based solutions for every problem is like for something like this, where we have to talk to, um, you know, a graphical interface where the user could press any button, any button, uh, and, you know, it has to trigger that and handle that. And, you know, we've got to talk to this other microprocessor that can send back any number of different responses, not necessarily in the same order. Event-based programming is a good solution for that because, you know, you can write a handler that just looks for these events that get emitted by these external forces and then does something based on that. But if you're writing, you know, like your Python introduction 101 weather forecast report utility, you probably don't want to use event-based programming for that, even though I can think of ways that you could use event-based programming for that. So it's more of like, be careful that you're not just forcing a paradigm because you, you want to use it and you enjoy using it. Like I'm having a blast writing these things. You know, it's great when I boot up my, um, the embedded system that we're creating and I instantly see the like status LED go from like, and it skips states when it connects to Wi-Fi because sometimes it connects to Wi-Fi faster, sometimes it's slower. And when it just like skips a whole bunch of, you know, configuration states and connects immediately to Wi-Fi, oh, that's such a good feeling. 
because you know it's like otherwise that would have taken five or six seconds to do but because i've done it like this it pretty much can do it as soon as it's available and that's what event-based programming is about it's about not waiting superfluously for other things to happen that sometimes don't actually need to happen but it does add like i said a whole bunch of complexity your states go all over the place so you have to be careful and cognizant when you're designing it and um that's one of the main reasons why onboarding new people can be can be hard but yeah dude it's it's pretty good like you can think of you can it slides naturally into lots of different paradigms like interrupts in an embedded system they naturally lend themselves to event-based programming so an interrupt in of itself is an event right and that could send back another event to your main loop of your application that's outside the interrupt handler and get it to do something so your main loop is waiting on events from its various interrupt handlers think of something in like an rtos you can have an event group uh, wait on those events and just handle them as they come in from your interrupt handlers or something like that um, then you know you could also poll for events so if you've got a gui for instance written in qt you can use a queue timer to poll for events you don't need a fully separate thread for it or anything like that so it's pretty flexible and it lends itself well in lots of different situations but i'm trying to be careful not to overdo it like i'm having a lot of fun building these applications where you know they can handle pretty much anything it's very robust it's nice but they take a lot of work to get tweaking and to get your architecture well done and so that can be a bit of a concern as well you know like if it's not well thought out you can easily make a horrendous event driven system like one where different events spawn all over the place you know you're constantly switching state if you don't get an event that you expect you know your program does something undefined you really have to be careful but when you get it right man it feels good like watching that wi-fi connection thing the led just go like boom 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 connected that is such a good feeling and it happens fast sometimes it happens slow sometimes but my program can handle it either way yeah those are my thoughts on event driven programming i'm kind of in my era for that you know like i'm kind of looking at all of these problems that i'm facing like every problem i seem to encounter right now has an event driven solution i'm just trying to be careful that you know that's not the only solution that i'm employing for these things making sure that i still pick the rest the right tool for the job even though i'm like you know kind of in this headspace right now of like oh make an event handler make an event processor do this do that everything has to emit an event in fact i would say that my life right now is like event based because the distributed system that i wrote that's my smart home engine that pretty much runs my life guess what that's event based as well you know like clock events things like that um it's all event based so like you saw my lights change this then that wasn't planned it just hit 11 o'clock over here and 11 o'clock is an event and it changes my lights to like this lower lower thing so my life is event-based i'm becoming an event-based person all my programs are event-based this is my era for that i guess and maybe in six months i will be completely over it and think that it's you know a little bit silly but i think everybody has to go through eras where they're really into one paradigm or another you know um and i guess this is my time to be event driven so thanks for listening guys let me know what your favorite programming paradigms are if you're kind of into any right now let's jump the shark please 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 oh this is such a good way to end the video did you see me jump the shark right there that was pretty cool all right so i'm gonna leave it there on a high note cheers <laughs>